This episode of On The Beat is brought to you by Ingles. Shop online with Ingles Curbside Pickup. New curbside stores opening every week. Please welcome Mike Griffith. Well, hey everybody, Mike Griffith here and welcome to tonight's Ingles On The Beat. And we have a lot of football to talk about. We've got an incredible interview with Asa Newell, a five-star, six-foot-nine forward that is going to light it up for the Georgia Bulldogs next week, or excuse me, next year, and wait until you meet Asa. We did a little pre-recorded interview. He's down in Florida, a heavy travel schedule for him, just won a national championship in high school, and very soon he'll be playing in New York City in the Jordan Brand Classic. So this is a, a young man that's on the move. Uh, but very plugged into Georgia and really uh, probably the most pivotal facet of the future of Georgia basketball. And he's going to be joining us in just a few minutes. I want to start at the top with what everybody's talking about. Uh, the scrimmage this last weekend and the upcoming spring game, G-Day, which is going to be at 1 o'clock on Saturday. Um, I can't wait. Uh, I wanted to start, though, with the scrimmage. And, and I want to be very clear about this. The media is not allowed in the scrimmage, okay? And so we rely on sources, people that we know and trust that were there to tell us. Well, who are those sources? Well, a lot of boosters. Um, if you give enough money, part of being a donor is the privilege of watching practice. And of course, those people have computers like everyone else, and they like to tell people what they saw. Um, and so we share what they what they saw, and we put it into perspective with what Kirby Smart tells us in the media. We get to go every Tuesday and ask him questions about the team, but what he's seen so far and what he's wanting the team to work on. I think the overriding storyline of the offseason has been Carson Beck. Whether it's Carson is a co-favorite for the Heisman Trophy, Carson buying a Lamborghini and just saying it's just a car. He's a car guy. I mean, let's face it, that moved the needle. People kind of go, oh, yeah, George has got the Lamborghini car guy. Uh, or Carson, more specifically for this week, trying to work with some new receivers. Georgia lost their three of their top four pass catchers. Uh, Brock Bowers, obviously an incredible force, almost a superhero, like Superman. His teammates didn't even believe. They say he's not real. I mean, he they say he's not real. Because he runs so fast, because he catches everything, because he's got such great balance. And he saved the day so many times. He's gone. Lad McConkey was so explosive, game-changing speed, uh, impossible cover. Um, man, I, I always say I wish I would have seen a full season of Lad, but I think we will in the NFL. He might be a first-round draft pick. And, and then Marcus Rosemey, Jack Sane. I mean, you talk about a blue-collar receiver that made all the catches, tough catches, did all the blocking that you need to spring those long runs, and then a special teams guy. So you're losing three, and, and he was a leader in the receiving core. I've seen Marcus, you know, in the media, he was always smiling and, and really has a love of the game. But with teammates, I saw him interact with teammates, and it was very clear that he was a, a leader figure on that team. And so you lost three really important pass catchers there. And so Carson is going to have to work with some new people. I think we all know Oscar Delp is pretty solid. I think he's a very good, I think he's Charlie Warner. I think he's an NFL tight end. Lawson Luckley, we've heard great things about. So I, I anticipate Georgia will continue to play the, the two tight end look, and I think they'll be effective. I don't know they got a game breaker there, but I think they're going to be effective and they're going to create problems for other teams. But who's going to be at wide receiver? Well, we've seen Dylan Bill make some plays. Now, can Dylan elevate to the level of an Adani Mitchell? Um, I, I don't know that yet. You know, remember, this is a guy that played running back in high school. He gets better and better, made some big catches last year, catches the ball in traffic. I really like his upside. And obviously, after the catch, as a former running back, this guy knows what to do with it. Ra Ra Thomas was a guy that came in to kind of be that X, and he had some injuries and some off the field things that slowed him down. This has been an important spring for him. We haven't heard a ton about him, but I, I did hear he is progressing, and so I don't discount that. Colby Young was a transfer from Miami. He's a big guy. Um, you know, we see him at practice, you know, 6'4", 205, lanky. This is a guy that can win some jump balls. Uh, this guy can jump out of the gym. Uh, you look at some of uh, his ability on the vertical. This is going to be a really popular red zone target for Carson. Good luck catching this guy. Uh, on the jump ball fade. I, I mean, I, I think this is going to be one of the more important signees. Now, can he take 
his game from being, uh, you know, a red zone target to a 100 yard threat. Can he learn all the offense? Kirby Smart talked about that. He's flashed at times. So when we talk about the scrimmage, what they saw was Carson does look in charge. Uh, Kirby's talked about how they're trying to get him to throw to some of the newer guys. Um, you know, Anthony Evans is a guy I saw in practice that his quick twitch and and his hands. I mean, th this is an exciting player. We're hearing great things about Arian Smith. Speaking of scrimmage, touchdown catch uh, for Arian Smith and yet another scrimmage. Arian was kind of a, uh, I don't want to say a gadget guy, but more of a role player. It ran a lot of the fades. Remember early on, it was like more than half his catches were like for touchdowns or something. I think they're trying to turn him into more of an every down uh, receiver. And he's responded really well to that. They really like his progress. He's become more of a leader, outspoken as a leader. So I'd say that the progress of Arian Smith is probably one of the more important things uh, of the spring. We, we probably don't talk enough about it. Um, overall, though, overarching theme, Carson Beck in charge, right? Carson is going to take this team as far as it can go. And this team can only go as far as Carson takes him. He's had a really, really good spring. He looks good. He's thick. He's athletic. He's hungry. He's ready to go. We talked about the receivers stepping up. Uh, Dominic Lovett, another guy that Kirby says has been dominant at times. And, and you want that guy that can, can get open, right, that you know will be there. That's what Brock Bowers brought to you. I think Ladd brought it a little bit. But guys that when Carson sees the blitz coming, oh, he's going to know who we can get the ball to quickly that's going to come through. The defensive line impact. Uh, Kristen Miller uh, made a couple of plays in this most recent scrimmage. This is important. Um, you know, this is a six foot four, 305 pound third year guy. Uh, last year played in 13 games, had 14 tackles, didn't play a whole lot of snaps. He may work his way into more snaps this year. Obviously, you have Warren Brinson and Nazir Stackhouse, the returning D tackles. Uh, that, like Kirby says, don't just come back to come back, come back to make impact. And, and Nazir and Warren also leaders, very important players. Um, you know, the younger players are going to feed off of them. They're going to get their work ethic from them. They're going to draw their attitude from them. So this defensive line room, very, very important. Xavier McLeod, a guy that transferred in from South Carolina. Obviously, things didn't go well, but I'll tell you what, when you go out to practice, and I saw this myself, and you see him, and you say, that guy is so athletic for his size. Now, can he get the technique? Does he play with the, 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 the necessary fury? Those are things... Uh, that separate right from just a competent piece to a potential train wrecker. And Kirby has said before that this offensive line, uh, or excuse me, this defensive line maybe lacks greatness, right? Uh, but he still says they can be pretty good. And his comment uh, was that we have players on our defensive line who can get better. He said, the worst feeling as a coach is when you don't have players that you can get better. He said, but the coaches across the country uh, there's some of them that don't have a 300 pounder. Georgia has several, uh, take away from coach smart. We just have to continue to get better and execute at a higher level scrimmage to gave Georgia an opportunity to do just that. Remember iron sharpens iron, right? And you're going against maybe the best offensive line in the country. or certainly one of the top two quarterback depth. I mean, this is kind of a sticky area that nobody really wants to talk too much about, um, because I think all of us are rooting for Gunnar Stockton to be the next man up, right? This is a guy that's invested in the program. This is a high school record holder in the state of Georgia. He's been all dog uh, ever since he, he flipped from South Carolina. Um, he's a tough guy. Uh, he runs the ball really well. Kind of reminds you a little bit of Stetson Bennett uh, with that mobility. Uh, but is he enough to be the number two? I think jury's out because we know that for a minute there, Georgia, Georgia had Jaden uh, Mayeva committed, uh, the UNIV quarterback, but then he flipped to USC. And, and Kirby said typically like to have four guys, scholarship guys in the receiver room, especially with Ryan Pugliese uh, having that little knee injury uh, this spring. To me, that really jacks up the need for another quarterback. But where does that quarterback come in at? Does he come in at number? I think I think you've got to say he comes in competing for the number two job. He comes in competing uh, with Gunnar Stockton to see who the quarterback of the future is. Again, the Ryan Pugliese injury, 
um, really heightened the need, really was a reminder to Georgia, hey, that only leaves you two quarterbacks. Scholarship. That can happen at any time. Now, I don't think Ryan's injury is debilitating to the point where he's going to miss time next year, but it was a reminder of how fragile that position is, and we've seen it. We've seen Georgia go through quarterbacks. I mean, you know, we, we the, the, it's very well documented that Stetson Bennett was not the plan, okay? He was plan B and plan C and plan D. Now, once he had his opportunity, uh, you know, he became a Heisman Trophy finalist and, and won two MVP trophies. But, it, you know, you got to have that depth. You just don't know – who you're going to have to call upon. So I think the QB depth is something to watch. And I think this is a very important scrimmage for Gunnar Stockton to kind of show his wares. Uh, finally, you know, uh, in, in the last scrimmage, the, there were a couple of mistakes, right? And finally, the, the running back surge. Um, we know that Trevor Etienne ranks among the top tailbacks in the nation, according to most. And and we've all heard about 240-pound sophomore Roderick Robinson and his 7% body fat and, and how he's opened some eyes. But, you know, it was Andrew Paul uh, who actually had the explosive play in scrimmage, too. And remember, Andrew, when he came in and, and we were looking at, uh, you know, I think Broderick uh, and, and Andrew Paul were both freshmen? No, Br I'm sorry, Branson Robinson. It was Branson Robinson. And, of course, Branson right now injured uh, with a knee injury. And we think that he, during this offseason, Kirby had put his timeline at getting better, like, right after spring drills. So I don't think we're going to see him in the G-Day game. But I think the hope is that he's going to be ready to compete again in the fall. Uh, but dialing it back to when the, him and uh, Andrew came in as freshmen, a lot of people said, wow, you know, what a what a dynamic combination. You had this physical runner in Branson Robinson, and then you had Andrew Paul, who was a little bit more versatile, had the ability to catch the ball as well as run it. From all indications, he's coming back around. And you've got to be three or four deep. We learned that last year. You know, Dejon Edwards played half the year with a sprained knee. Kendall Milton missed some time at the start of the year. Uh, we mentioned the the Branson Robinson injury, and he was out. Andrew Paul was still working his way back. I mean, Cash Jones is a walk on, was getting quality snaps. So this 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 running back room uh, is evolving. Um, it's going to get better. By the way, Nate Frazier coming in, um, you know, great running back out of um, Modern Day High School in California. So the running back, the surge of that running back room, I think is going to be really really uh, important, and uh, I, I can't wait for G Day game to see what happens and, and who shines and who stands out and, and how does Kirby use these guys? You just never know what Kirby's going to do. Does he try and hide some things? Like I wouldn't think he's going to show some of the feature plays with some of the leading receivers. My guess is uh, he'll probably have Carson working with some of those incoming guys early to try to get them more involved. Uh, we talked a little bit about Colby Young, London Humphreys. Uh, has looked good at times, I'm told, and, and Michael Jackson from USC is the guy they brought in with high hopes. So be interesting to see the ball distribution and how they spread the ball around. Now, on to basketball. First, though, before we get to Ace and Newell, before we get to Ace and Newell, I want to recognize our sponsor, Ingles. Without Ingles, uh, we couldn't do this every Monday night. So I want to thank Ingles for their sponsorship, and I want you to pay attention to this message. And when we come back, Georgia five-star basketball signee Ace and Newell will join us. Did you know Ingalls only sells USDA choice and prime cuts of meat? Maybe it's time to reward yourself. Our butchers cut all our meat fresh in the store every day. Grass-fed, organic, you name it. Not only that, we'll even cut it to order just the way you like it. And we grind meat fresh in the store multiple times a day. It's all in the bag. That's the best meat in town for the best folks in town. Ingalls. Low prices. Love the savings. Well, welcome back. And as promised now, five-star Georgia basketball signee Ace and Newell. And, man, congratulations on winning a national championship. Uh, Montverde Academy with a win in Indiana. I mean, an undefeated season. Tell me about your championship game. Oh, the championship game was great. We played um, a hard team, Paul to six, um, a lot of shooters. Um, all, everyone's really versatile. So it was a really strong game. But we just came through it at the end. Yeah, well, at Georgia's getting a winner. I know a lot of Georgia basketball fans, Georgia sports fans in general, have had you kind of circled. You've kind of been a guy that's been talked about. A lot of people, you know, let's hurry up and get to next season. Well, why not wait a minute? Mike White and the Bulldogs this year, Asa. Let me ask you, you got a brother on the team, obviously. Uh, Jaden, you keep up with him. 
What did you think about the way Georgia basketball finished up this season? Well, I feel like they did a great job finishing up in the NIT, uh, knocking off Xavier and um, Wake Forest. It just shows, um, you know, Mike White knows how to win um, in a tournament setting and also um, momentum into next year. Yeah, and you're a guy that, I mean, you had opportunities. I mean, Alabama's a Final Four team, and they they tried to get you Auburn and Bruce Pearl. Uh, he's done some great things there, and and yet you choose Georgia. What did you see about Georgia uh, that brought you to the Bulldogs and, and putting your basketball fortunes uh, behind Coach White? You know, I, I have a lot of trust with Coach Mike White, um, you know, what he did at Florida, um, and then, you know, coming to Georgia. It's hard. It's really hard to come to a team. Um, you know, before Mike White, you know, it was a losing season. Um, yeah. But to come and flip, you know, a team to, you know, above uh, 500 um, last year and a 20 win season this year, he's he's just doing a fantastic job. Um, so I know he just needs pieces like me, you know, to push him um, to the edge. And that's what I want to do. I want to turn, I want to turn Georgia basketball around and put it back on the map. Well, I mean, you're the guy for it. I mean, you're a winner. Um, you obviously you won a national championships this year. You you've played with other high talent players, and you understand, you know, what it takes when, you know, not everybody can shoot every time down. You know, not everybody's going to get you know 32 minutes every night. You understand how the 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 highly talented players, I guess, work together. And and I guess with this portal, um, I'm curious. And, and I don't know. I don't, I don't think they're company secrets, but I mean, you're going to have an idea of some of the guys that George is going after. I would think you, you'd probably be a guy that if I'm Mike White, I'd say, hey, man, can you get on the phone and call this guy or can I have this guy call you? I mean, what's that? You're kind of a recruiter right now a little bit, aren't you? I'm, I'm almost a, a assistant coach right now. Uh, <laughs> you know, I tell Eric Pastrana I'm the best recruiter in the nation. Uh, you know, sometimes Coach EP or Mike White tells me to, you know, hey, take this guy. Um, and let them know that we want you really bad. And, you know, I do. So, yeah, that's, that's cool. It, it is cool because they know you're coming. They know Georgia's got the five star. They saw what Georgia did, you know, with, with some talent. And I, I kind of looked at it like I, I, I think they got the most out of the guys they got. I mean, you think about um, some of the players had played at maybe smaller programs and not the power five. And then you think about some of the players that were maybe backups other places and had a chance to start. And they kind of, you know, and then there, there was a few freshmen. I mean, Blue Kane, Silas Demery Jr. Um, you, you know, these guys uh, got better as the year progressed. None of them faded. I mean, it, it was almost as good as they could do. But then there would be guys like I'd see like you on other teams. I'd go, man, that guy's just this guy's just lights out. You know, I, I guess I would ask you um, brag on yourself for a second here. What do you think you can bring right away? I know you're going to get better as time goes by. We saw that with Anthony Antman Edwards. He got better even as that first season went by. But what do you bring immediately? And then what are some things you think you'll work yourself into at that level? Uh, I think I bring a winning culture, you know, to the team because I know what it takes. Um, I also, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a presence. Like I'm, a, I'm a defensive presence. Um, you, you're going to know I'm there. Um, I bring energy. I'm an energy guy, um, you know, throughout in practice. Uh, I'm a leader and, you know, I can stretch the floor. And some things that I'm going to work on is um, I want to work on my handles. Um, you know, being as tall as I am, I got to get lower. Um, I'm going to get in the weight room, get stronger um, with Coach Crane. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm thinking of Tobias Harris. I covered Tobias at Tennessee. Tobias was a tall guy that could shoot, that could uh, re that brought a winning pride. I'm, I'm 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 getting a comp here. Let me see if that plays out. If you watch now, Tobias in the NBA is a grown man now. A lot of people was, tell me I play like Chris Bosh. Bosh is oh wow. Yeah, lefty, uh, knock it down, uh, strong. So a lot of people tell me that. All right. Well, I'll tell you, I know Georgia will certainly take that. What What's realistic, though? It, it, you know, with, with the portal and there will be roster turnover, we know that. We don't know to what extent, but I think last year, I want to say maybe it was an average of eight or nine guys flipped on every team, which was, mm -hmm. I want to say, maybe 50% of rosters. So teams can get better right away and really fast. What's a realistic early goal? Like, in your mind, when you think, I'm going to Georgia and we're – we're going to do this like individually for yourself. And then what would you say for the team? Maybe just sitting here right now, 
in April. Long way to go. But like, what's where's your mind at on that? My mind is to get the March Madness, um, make it to the tournament, um, and see where God takes us from there. Um, individually, um, I'm going for you know freshman of the year. Um, my standards are high for myself, and I hold myself to those standards. Yeah, yeah. And well, like I said, Ant Man was was great to work with. I don't know if you've had a chance to cross paths with him yet, but like you, a very charismatic guy, confident, uh, but not cocky. He knew how good he was, and he brought a, a real winning attitude. We'll never know what Ant Man could have done because that was the tournament that was right. ended by COVID, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And Ant Man, interestingly enough, uh, Asa had committed to saying that even if Georgia just played in the NIT he was going to play out the season, even though he knew sure. he was the number. Yeah. As the number sure. one. Kid. I don't know how many people know this, but you, your family actually lived in Athens yeah. and real close to campus. In fact, can, what do you remember uh, from your time in Athens? And do you think that played a little bit of a role in you and your brother being here? I think it definitely did play a role. You know, it felt great to be back home in Athens, Georgia. Um, some of my early memories, I know my, my Nana, who's not here with me anymore, um, Jacqueline Mitchell, she worked for the university, um, but, you know, she would always, um, you know, take her to her job. Um, she would schedule piano lessons in the music building and would take piano lessons. Um, I was on the swim team with uh, the swim dogs. Um, but there's just, you know, growing up on campus, it was just, it just felt like it was right to be back. Are you a better swimmer or piano player? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say swimmer. Uh, I wish I could still play the piano. I I kind of lost it, but <laughs> any other hidden talents other than basketball? Uh, hidden talents. I like to tell myself I can sing, but that's not true. But nah. well, well, we'll find out when you make it to the league. You'll be you're gonna be one of those guys in the studio probably checking it out. That's right. What, who would you who would you want to collaborate with? Ooh, I'll probably collaborate with. Low baby, probably low baby. Okay, all right, I got you. Though no, that's good stuff. It's gonna be fun. When, as far as the guys that that are on the team right now, obviously you're close with your brother. Have you you made any friendship or any bonds with the guys that are there now? Have you been talking to anybody a lot? Yeah, um, probably not a lot. You know, um, I'm close with BK. Um, he's my brother's roommate. Um, you know, just being up in Athens, I'm with him all the time. Uh, but. Yeah, not I don't have anyone really I text, but um, you know, if I see him on the gram, you know, I like to show him love or uh, you know, say what's up to him. But yeah. No doubt. So so what's next for you? Got a little you got a little break in here. You just finished winning a national championship in the high school ranks. What's next for you coming up here? Um actually tomorrow I leave for uh the USA team Hoop Summit. So I'm gonna be flying to uh Oregon um and playing in that game. And then I got the Jordan Brand Classic uh in new york april 21st um so th those are my two last high school events um and we're gonna put on a show you went, went yeah it does that is going to be exciting april 21st you say that's in new york is that madison mm -hmm. square garden uh i don't i'm not sure i'm not sure check that out there's a there's a, a few venues there i've been to in that new york metropolitan area uh wow it's all coming fast when do you arrive on the georgia campus when do you get plugged into athens i think i think june i think june is my date i'm not sure i'm gonna have to check uh, but i know it's gonna be in the summer um but it's coming up life's moving fast i just played my last high school game on saturday I, i'm like man i'm just trying to take everything in i'll take well you know what before this interview and i'll let you go here in a second you were talking about calipari's move to arkansas and, and, you know, here's a guy that's been with Kentucky for so long and, of course, with Memphis. But all these moving pieces, how does a and, – and obviously, you know, you're this this is your generation. You're one of the young guys dealing with this. How – for you, does it even seem a little frantic or is, or is this like, you know, this is just the real world now? I feel like it's just the real world now, um, you know, with NIL and, you know, the transfer portal, everything. You just really have to have a lot of faith. Um with everything, you know, just trusting God, you know, that he's going to put the right pieces together, um, you know, in a team. But I just feel like um, I feel like it's hard. It's really, really hard for the coaches and, uh, you know, players to, you know, try and make the right decision on someone. You know, it's changing the whole landscape, you know, of college basketball. You're not really going for, 
you're still going for high school recruits, but you also, hey, maybe I can get a guy, a four-year guy who's a grown man who's been playing at this level and maybe not take, you know, a freshman who's trying to go one and done. Yeah. And, experience. Yeah. And if you're on the team, you, you know, this is, I guess this is where the trust and your relationship with coach white comes in. Like, like, what are we look, what are we looking for next year, coach? Right. I mean, it's, you got to right. know, that's why your involvement right now is really pivotal. Right. It is pivotal. Yeah. That's exciting. Well, man, good luck to you. This is going to be a fun week for you out there. And uh, and then in the Jordan Baron, I mean, that's right around the corner. I mean, we're talking what April 21st. That's just uh, man, a couple of weeks away. Well, I know Georgia fans are, are really excited. Um, is there is there a number reveal? Do we know your number yet? Have we put that out anywhere? Oh, my number? I'm going to be wearing 14. OK. All right. I wonder about that. So we'll be looking for that in the UGA bookstore. They might even have the jersey here before you get here, man. Everybody's been waiting on this day. So maybe. We'll well, tell your father, Justin, how much I appreciate it. It's so important um, for players like yourself. You've been on the map a long time. Um, it, it's obviously important, or you know, to have someone that can, you know, help represent you and get you squared away. I know you guys are a team. It's like Team Newell over there. It's um, it's been pretty awesome. So thank you very much for your time here on Dog Nation, and I know the fans are really, really looking forward to it. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Thanks again to Asa. Now I want to take this moment to recognize our sponsor, Anytime Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. And right after this message from Anytime Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, we're going to go over our Who's Hot and Who's Cold segment, and there's going to be some surprises. Stay with us. Want to make sure your family stays comfortable all year long? Our family of trained comfort specialists are available anytime to service or repair your system. Or it may be time to replace your old units with a new trained HVAC system. We are a locally owned family business and we carefully select the technicians who we send into your home. At any time, heating, cooling, and plumbing, we are large enough to handle all of your HVAC and plumbing needs, but small enough to care. Call today to take advantage of our three visit annual maintenance plan. Welcome back. It's been a great show. Obviously, really enjoyed that segment with Asa Newell, a five-star signee for Georgia basketball. And, of course, the five keys on the scrimmage and the takeaways uh, as we get ready for G-Day. And it just doesn't get any hotter than Georgia football right now. They're the preseason number one team in all these way-too-early polls. Nothing's going to happen that's going to change that. They have the co-Heisman Trophy favorite in Carson Beck, a guy that I think – is the most talented Georgia quarterback since Matthew Stafford. And we'll see how Carson matures and asserts himself. Um, I think that's something that's part of the growth process that Mike Bobo uh, has been working on there with Carson Beck. So that's going to be red hot. It's a 1 p.m. game. Uh, it's going to be streamed on ESPN Plus and SEC Network Plus. Contact your local cable provider uh, or just Google streaming and ESPN plus and SEC network plus, and you'll see how to, how to watch it there. Of course, you can check it out at the stadium as well. Dog nation will be there. Uh, we will be very well uh, represented with Brandon Adams uh, doing his pregame show uh, from the bookstore. I look forward to stopping by there. I think all of the dog nation reporters and analysts will be out there to check things out. And then there's a lot to look at. Uh, you talk about hot Carson Beck has had a fantastic spring. Just can't say that enough. Um, this team can only go as far as Carson takes him. But we're hearing good things about Arian Smith. Can the speedster, who may be the fastest receiver in college football, can he tear it up on G-Day? I know that inquiring minds want to know. Dylan Bell, does he got a couple spectacular catches in him? Kirby told us earlier this spring he's been making great catches all over the field. Everybody wants to see the new receivers, Colby Young, London Humphreys, and Michael Jackson the third. I got a feeling – you're going to have your wish granted. I think Kirby wants Carson to work with these guys. I think Gunner's going to want to work with these guys too. And uh, Anthony Evans is a guy that I've been excited about, second-year receiver, and I saw some really promising things uh, from him. Now, that is the hot that is the hot segment. Now, here's an even hotter take. This involves Georgia baseball. And I say hotter because it's probably going to upset some people. It was late Saturday night when the Georgia baseball team was playing Mississippi State at Duty Noble Field. Uh, there were like 13,000 people there. It's one of the most impressive uh, SEC baseball stadiums, uh, really stadiums in the country. 
The dogs pulled out a three to two win. Clayton Chadwick hit a ninth inning home run to provide the winning run. And, and Brian Zeldin has just been dynamite out of the bullpen and relief. But before that happened, there was a collision at home plate and Mississippi state player, Johnny long looked like he kind of put a knee into Dylan Carter, the Georgia pinch runner and other players were at the ready. The umpire stepped in. They just started ejecting people, 11 players, and then pause the game for 40 minutes. A lot of people were upset by that. Coaches are like, wait a minute, our guys did. My hot take is they got the game back under control and they gave the guys time to cool off. I think the umpires did the right thing. I, I'm a big proponent of prioritizing player safety over fan experience, um, rushing the field. I think – I think the sun is set on that. I, I think we're in a day and age now where it's it's too dangerous. Um, the interaction, you saw that with some of the court storming in basketball. I mean, we're very fortunate there hasn't been a more serious incident, uh, but I think we're to the point where crowd control is very important. I think it's important to protect student athletes now. Um, don't forget, a lot of these guys make enough money, they can hire a lawyer and and sue the school if if there was an injury. Uh, to them so there, there's there's more than just common sense here there's legal ramifications involved now uh, there always has been so uh i'm a i'm in favor of the heavy uh officiating in terms of how they controlled the georgia mississippi state game only because the job at that point is to ensure the game stays under control and player safety and send the message that look guys we're not going to tolerate this it doesn't take much if you come out of the dugout, if you're too close on the field, we're going to take action. I applaud that. I think that was the right thing to do. Here's a hot and cold, all in one. Uh, I was up in Knoxville visiting family, and on Sunday, I covered the Georgia-Tennessee game. Big, big game. Number three, Georgia. Number four, Tennessee. Uh, the Lady Vols had a pitcher thrown like 76 miles an hour, which is the equivalent of 106 mile an hour fastball. You, you all know that softball is circles closer to the plate than than the baseball mound. And so when you make the adjustment for how close that that circle is, it, trying to hit this girl was like trying to hit 106 mile an hour fastball. Jaden uh, Fields came up and, and lifted a sack fly, put George up one to nothing. And it looked like it would be enough because this pitcher, they've got this pitcher named Shelby Walters, and she transferred in from Duke last year. She shut down Tennessee on Saturday night. She threw four and two-thirds scoreless innings, and Georgia got a three to two win. And so that led to Sunday kind of you know being the decisive game of the series. And Tony Baldwin just put her out there again. It's like, okay, you pitched the last four and two-thirds Saturday. Now I'm going to start you on Sunday. And doggone if she didn't throw five scoreless innings as Georgia had that one to zero lead. But then in the sixth inning, uh Tennessee hit a bomb. Cleanup hitter came up. Um, you could tell Walters had lost a little bit. Um, she'd thrown 10 innings. She threw 10 scoreless innings against the number four team in the nation on the road before a three-run bomb just wiped it all out. That's cold because now Georgia softball, which is a World Series team, maybe even a national championship potential team with all their veterans, they've now lost four out of their last six games. And, uh, and that's cold, and they'll be playing in Lexington this weekend. So we'll keep an eye on baseball. Uh, baseball lost that final game of the state game against Mississippi State. You know West Johnson's team, though. They're so competitive. They're going to bounce back. And then the softball with the high standards, uh, looking to be a World Series team. That's going to be something to check out. And then right around the corner, uh, Asa Newell says he's going to be on campus in June, and he's already doing some recruiting. So I, I don't know how to classify the transfer portal in here, but it's happening it's happening, folks. Between now and May 1st, there's going to be turnover on the basketball roster. And, and Kirby's let us know that these players, even though the, the portal doesn't officially open for football until the 15th, he said, all I know is when they come to me, they already know what they're going to do most of the time. So those conversations are taking place. I, I don't know if I, I can't call that hot or cold. I, 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 I don't know. Is there a the way the wind blows uh, way to break this down? Because that is something going on. And we'll find out if Georgia is on the hot side of that transfer class. I kind of think they will be. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining me. I want to thank Asa Newell, uh, you know, for coming on the show. I want to thank Kaylee Menzel for her production today. Of course, Kaylee and Connor do a show every Thursday night. You need to check that out. 
Wednesday night, it's Jeff Santel with Before the Hedges. And then every day at 10 a.m., it's the voice of the fan, Brandon Adams, right here on DogNation.com, on DogNation YouTube page, and on the DogNation Facebook page. Have a great